Book learning versus life learning. You may find yourself from time to time in circumstances that cause you to wonder, why am I being tested right now? Why is my faith being tried right now? Why are these things happening to me or to my family? Well, here's the truth, church. Everything that you experience in this life is a test. With book learning, passing a test can be simplified to memorizing information and just recalling what you know. But God is a great teacher. And in the school of Jesus, God is going to let you take some tests that require more than just memorizing something and spitting it back out. No, you're going to have to have something on the inside that arises during your life lesson test that causes you to live like God is teaching you how to live. Is the Lord really teaching you all the way through life? Yes, He is. Look at Ephesians 4 and 20 and 21. Jesus is a great teacher. Paul said, but you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, and the truth is in Jesus. Thank God. It helps this morning to understand why God allows your tests and your trials. If you think back to your own school days, how many of you remember your school days this morning? I I'm having harder remembering that far back, I can tell you right now. I don't even like to think about what year anniversary and what year school uh, you know, reunion it is for me right now. But when you were in school, were you a good test taker or a bad test taker? Some people are great at taking tests. Other people approach tests and end up looking kind of like our friend here in this picture, this fellow right here. Notice how frustrated the little fella is. He don't want to look at it anymore. He threw his pen down. He's just got a fist balled up right now. Maybe that's kind of like some of us. But think back to your school days. When a test was given, your answers on the test revealed how much you actually learned from what was being taught. Paul in Ephesians, in the scripture that we read, talks about a different kind of school. There is a Jesus school where you're actually taught by the Lord, and that's the school of life. If you belong to Jesus, church, you're in the Jesus school. The tests may look a little bit different, but they still have the exact same purpose. When you go through a test through life learning in the Jesus school, What's revealed in you is not how much knowledge you have retained that you can just recall. No, those life tests that happened to you in the Jesus school reveal how much you've learned along the way about duplicating Christ. Those life lessons, those tests, those things that you have to endure on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, those things that creep up into your life, those are tests in the Jesus school that reveal whether or not somewhere along the way the teacher got through to you and now you know how to duplicate him in your speech, in your actions, in your behaviors. Come on. Unfortunately, sometimes people spend an awful lot of time in the Jesus school, but they never learn how to be like Jesus when test time comes. They're just like that rebellious child in class back in the day. That kid who came to school every day and just sat there. Y'all remember that guy? He didn't really have the drive. He didn't have the determination. He really didn't have the character to be on purpose about learning and applying anything that the teacher was giving him. He was just there because of truancy issues. Just there because he had to be there. And when it came time for the test, he found out something. He found out that being there was not enough. You've got to be deliberate about changing what you know and how much you know so that your outcomes can get better. Are y'all with me this morning? The University of Jesus. I once had a student in my class, one of my classes. 
I told him this. I said, man, if you will just bear down and try and graduate, on graduation night, I will be there and I will give you the keys to my Ram truck. That's what I told him. I'll never forget it. Told him in front of the whole class so I'd be accountable to it, you know. He had such a hard time believing in himself or believing that he could do anything. He had given up and really thrown in the towel. He said this. He said, Mr. Morrison, I know that you're really only just saying that because you know that I'm not going to do it. What he didn't realize, guys, was that because he had, he had a refusal to learn, a refusal to grow, and a refusal to be changed, that he was going to have hardships and afflictions in his life until he changed. It's, it's a realization that a lot of people in the Jesus school need to get in touch with. Because if you want to learn the hard way, God will let you have the hard way. I got anybody in here who knows what I'm talking about this morning? God will give you the hard way if the hard way is what you want. The psalmist said it like this in Psalm 119 and 67. He said, before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now I keep your word. Thank God. Before I was afflicted, man, I, I went astray. But now that I've been through some things and I've, I've had to engage in some life lessons and I've been to the Jesus school, before I was afflicted, I, went, I learned the hard way. But now, Lord, thank you for the lessons. I keep your word. Church, he will let you have the hard way if that is what you need to get his lesson. I don't know what some of your areas of testing are in your life. I know some of your areas of testing because we visit a lot, and, and I know most of you guys, and we, we touch base, and we pray with each other and support one another and things like that. I don't know what all of your testing times are, but I do know that if you belong to Jesus, you're in the school of Jesus, and He expects us to learn to be like Him no matter what. even through the kind of trials that seem long-term. All your, all your tests aren't temporary tests, man. Some of those things seem like they're taking forever. Amen. For example, just from a personal perspective, for example, I believe with all of my heart in physical healing and God's power to heal. I believe in physical healing and God's power to heal as much as I believe that we are sitting in this auditorium right now. But for a long time, long time, I have been enduring physical pain in an issue in my stomach. And for about for the past year of my life, I have also had to endure an awful pain in my right side of my lower back or my upper back that never seems to go away. Ever. And it's a test. But along those issues and those areas of life, I've learned some things. I've learned how to trust God and not get discouraged about what I'm going through. Pastor Brandon, how can you not get discouraged when God's requiring you to go through a long-term test? Well, I've realized some things about trusting God. I don't need to get discouraged because I know what I believe and I know what His Word says and I have no doubt in my mind whatsoever or in my heart that He is healing me. And every time, every time I pray and every time I ask God to heal my body, I can feel Him working in my life, drawing me closer to Jesus. Every time I practice and exercise that step of faith of saying, Lord, if I'm not going to be healed today, I'm going to trust You to touch me and heal me on the next day. And every time it's an opportunity for me to engage the test and pass the test, not by getting discouraged, not by blaming God, not by getting angry and trying to fix things on my own. But trust me on this. When you step out and believe God, you can look at it like this. Jesus will draw you closer every time you step into your test and trust him through your test. 
because I've learned something. I've learned and I realize that until my healing in my body is manifested, all it is is a test of my faith. Amen, everybody. Y'all need to hear that this morning because I know that many of you guys are going through things right now that you need to understand. Just because you're not getting your answer right away or right when you think it or your touch or your healing or your provision right now, it may just be that God wants you to learn how to hold on a little bit longer. Sometimes tests come in the form of pain that's not physical pain. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Sometimes there are tests that feel worse than pain. It's that pain, uh, some good examples. It's that pain of being bruised and rejected by people in your life you thought were your friends. And it's a test. Sometimes it's the pain that moms and dads can feel when their children do things that break their hearts, treat them ugly and treat them like strangers and your heart gets broken. Sometimes it's the pain that fills homes when husbands and wives go through garbage and they build walls of silence and distance between themselves and they spend every night wondering if they're ever going to Find their love again. Church, whatever that turmoil and that test in the school of life, church, you're going to pass those tests. When you step up and you arise in faith and you function like you still know how real God is right in the middle of it all. Don't lose heart. Keep believing. It's when you remind yourself that no matter what the affliction you're going through, it's not the cross. And Jesus, when He went to that cross, He endured the worst suffering so that you and I could rejoice in the middle of our light and temporary sufferings. Look at 1 Peter 4. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice. Rejoice to the extent of Christ's suffering, partaking of Christ's sufferings. That when His glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. Praise God, praise God. It may feel like you're all alone in the school of Jesus on your test. But this word we just read, said that there's somebody else somewhere going through the exact same thing right along with it too. And you can face it, church, with the kind of faith and the kind of dignity and the kind of grace. So while people are watching you go through it, when you come out on the other side with victory in hand, God Himself is glorified and you can finally have exceeding joy on the other side. Can anybody receive it this morning? Look at 1 Peter 1. 6 and 7. He said, In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Notice that verse 6 says this, guys. If need be. I want you to take a picture of this, write it down, or memorize it. For those of you who are really good at taking tests back in the day, and you can memorize everything. Sometimes you have to learn the lesson before your pain is lifted. Are y'all looking at that? Guys, next slide, please. I want you to read this. Sometimes you have to learn the lesson before your pain is lifted. 
To help us understand this, I thought about it this week. The best example I can think of is for those of us today who have children. You know that one of the toughest experiences as a parent is disciplining your children. It's hard. But the fact remains that sometimes children need to understand they've got to learn that there are consequences to certain behaviors. And when we lift the consequences before the lesson is learned, that child will begin to believe that he or she can do or say whatever they want to do and get away with it. And the result is a rebellious child. And that rebellion usually goes right along with them into adulthood. And it will spread into every area of their life. Relationships, decisions, even their faith life. Well, how many realize this morning our God is a much better parent than we are? I know my kids are thankful for that. Thank God. God is a much better parent than we are. And in His school, there is a principle that we need to get in our understanding this morning, a lot of us men. It doesn't matter how much you pray, how much you ask God to get you out of a situation. There is a lesson in your pain. And when we look at every example in the Word of God, we find out something so real. And here it is. Next slide, guys. God moves when we have learned what He wants to teach us. God moves when we learn what He wants to teach us. And that's going to be now through a temporary trial or a long-term thing that becomes a trend in our life that holds us back, that becomes destructive. And I challenge us right now, if God's going to teach us something from His Word, learn from His Word. Let the Word of God correct us. If He gives us the opportunity for book learning, let's take Him up on that one. Come on. Because his lessons in life learning hurt sometimes. How many know I'm right about it? Come on. I just want you to be reminded this morning and remember that while you're going through your test, you may be under his lesson. You may be even sometimes under his discipline. But however you're under him, if he's teaching you something, if you're being disciplined, you're under him, under his protection. He's your loving Heavenly Father who loves you. 1 Peter 1.5 You are kept. Everybody say kept. Come on. You are kept by the power of God through faith. Praise God. Praise God. You probably remember this famous story in the Bible. The story of Abraham and Isaac in Genesis chapter 22. When God allows you to go through a test, church. He's after the same thing that he was after when he asked Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac. And y'all know the story. If you don't, they climbed up the mountain. God had told Abraham to prepare a sacrifice and sacrifice his son. Isaac said to his dad when they got there, Dad, I see the fire. And Dad, I see the wood. But where is the lamb? And Abraham said, son, God himself will provide the lamb for the offering. God allowed Abraham to lead Isaac all the way up the mountain and even raise that knife. But God was also the one that said this, do not lay a hand on the lad or do anything to him, for I know that you fear God since you've not withheld your own son from me. What a test. Abraham's test was this. Does God mean more to me than even my most cherished affections? Am I willing to lay it all down, everything from the nearest and the dearest thing to me, to let God know that I trust Him completely? It was a tremendous test. 
Because Isaac was the son who was promised to Abraham. But Abraham passed that test. He gave his whole heart to the Lord. And sometimes you and I face t- tough, difficult tests. I want us to be reminded this morning that God has a purpose in your pain. If He's going to allow you to go through some things in the school of life, the school of Jesus, it's because He wants to duplicate Himself in you. And that brings me to the last two thoughts this morning's message. Just last two little thoughts here about passing tests in the school of Jesus today. Go to the next slide, guys. Passing the test. Number one thing I want to say is this. Please read this on your slide. Trials and sufferings and disappointments can reveal the true content of our heart. Sometimes a great trial and a great test is the only way to find out what's really going on in your heart. Because when you're up against it, that's when the real person comes out. You can spend all your time talking about how much you love the Lord and love God and all this blah, 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 and something happens that you don't like or you get pressed and pressured in some way, and all of a sudden spiritual fruit goes out the door. Come on, somebody. And the true content of our heart is revealed when we're pressed and pushed and squeezed. How do we handle it? when things aren't going our way? What about when we're having real pain in life? Do we find a way to glorify God in it, or do we grumble and complain? Church, we pass these tests when we handle these challenges and these tests with faith and with grace. We can never be like those church people described in Jude 16. Here's what the Bible says. You can read it on your screen. It says, these are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lusts. And they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. Amazing, guys. My prayer for all of us today is this. Man, when the pressure's on, there's enough of Jesus inside of us that his heart comes through our actions. His words comes through our lips. Our behaviors look like Jesus, not ourselves. Number two, I want to remind you to always gain strength when you're being tested by always doing this, learning from the Lord's example. I said earlier, it's not the cross. His suffering will always far exceed our suffering. But He showed us how to go through it. 1 Peter 2, 21. For to this you were called. Because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow in His steps. Thank God, thank God. Thank God for the example of Jesus. The school of Jesus. I want you to think about it this way, guys. You're going through tests. God is planting strength. He's planting faith in your life through your test. I'll conclude today by going back to where we started, Psalm 138. Sometimes it feels like you've gone through enough that you should have already graduated from the school of Jesus. (laughs) But here's the truth, church. Tests and trials are going to continue. They're going to come all the way until you're in the presence of Jesus. But you can have confidence this morning because when you're going through tests in the university of the Lord, here it is. You have this promise, and we read it earlier. We're going to read it again, and we're going to close. In the day when I cried out, you answered me. Come on, look how faithful God is. In the day when I cried out, you answered me. You made me bold with strength in my soul. And even though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. Praise God. You will stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies. 
and your right hand will save you. Praise God, praise God. What a promise. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Y'all say that one with me. Come on, ready? The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the works of your hand. That's my favorite part. Because you and I, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10, says that we are the handiwork of God. And let me tell you this about your Heavenly Father who loves you. Yes, He's training, He's shaping, He's molding, He's working, He's teaching. He's getting His hands dirty. Making you who He wants you to be. And He'll not forsake the works of His own hands. Praise God. In fact, He'll never leave you He'll never forsake you. Nobody likes tests. I don't, I don't know, maybe you're one of those kids in the school that looks forward to the test. I wasn't. In fact, the worst thing I used to hate when I was back in school back in the day was pop quizzes. How many of y'all remember pop quizzes? Those tests when you have no idea it's coming. Well, I don't know if y'all realize this, but just about every test God gives you is a pop quiz. Yes. You have no idea that it's coming. But you better be ready when it does. Pastor B, how do I know if I'm ready? If what you've learned along the way causes you to duplicate his person in your speech, your attitude, your behavior, your actions during the pop quiz. Then you're ready. Then you're learning. Can y'all receive it today, guys? Y'all stand with me, guys. Everybody, come on. Let's stand up. Hi, we're so glad you joined us at Loxley Church today. Our goal and our prayer is that every person uniquely encounter God, and we want to hear about yours. Scan the QR, and that will take you to an online Connect card. Leave a comment and tell us how you encountered God today. If you have a prayer request, we want to agree and believe with you for whatever you need God to do in your life. Let's close in prayer today. Heavenly Father, we love you. We adore you. We thank you for the privilege of coming into your presence. We thank you that we've been able to worship and sing songs of praise and that your word has gone forth in power. We pray that it would take root deep down in every person's life. I pray that this week that they would find you real, to them, that you would reveal yourself to them in a special way. If there needs salvation, we pray that salvation go forth. If there needs to be healing, we pray that healing would go forth. Restoration in families. God, we love you. We thank you. We give you the honor and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. We would love to see you in person, but if not, join us online next week.